this morning? I just want to give you something real quick, and I want to just practice, if we can, um, the, the, just the presence of God. Isn't it so good to just, uh, man, I just want to be overwhelmed by him, don't you? I'm so thankful that we can. We can live in that. So what we're being challenged in, and I just want to challenge us with today, I, I just got a, a different view. Isn't it so good to get a different perspective on something that you kind of already know, but, but it makes it come alive for us? I want to talk about... Um, um, what we are, are delighting in and, and um, how it's, it's, it's essential. Um, so I don't know if anybody's got your app up or not, um, but uh, uh, when I was thinking about delighting, my thoughts had to go to Larry. No. Um, <laughs> so I got a dog going after a ball. You know, you don't have to teach a dog to, to well, I kind of had to help my dog a little bit. He wanted, to, he wanted to run off with it. You know, you throw it, and he wanted to take it and go do what he wanted to with it. So I kind of had to help him. But most dogs, you know, they naturally do uh, what you want them to do because they already want to. They, they, they get excited about it. Oh, my dog, he's 13. And right now, if I went out there, he'd start spinning circles like he's a little puppy dog. Because he wants to go and chase that dummy out in the lake. I throw it as far as I can. And, and you know, he, he's not, he, he can't quite do what he wants to do anymore. I, I have to lift him up on the truck now and I have to help him get down because he's, you know, he's just kind of not there completely. But, but you know what? He delights in it. I don't have to persuade him at all. He's always persuading me because he wants to. He likes it. <laughs> so, for anything that we're going to actually do, it has to go beyond information to delighting. Because right. um, there's some things, you know, this is what I found out. I like classical guitar. And I found that some people just don't care for it at all. In fact, I've played some very beautiful music that doesn't get any views at all. I've written some wonderful music. I mean, it's just amazing. I, I will sit down and play it all day long because you know what? I delight in it. <laughs> Partly because my dad got me hooked on this. I don't know how he did. He was a cowboy from up in the mountains. And somehow, he started listening to Mexican-Spanish guitar and learning it on an electric guitar with all the wrong technique that I had to relearn once I learned it from him. <laughs> but you know what, he, what, what I got from him was a delighting in producing music. Whether it's enough for somebody else to like or not, I enjoy it. Yeah. And I will do that right now. I, I can sit down. Now, you know, you get tired. But I used to practice five hours a day. Why? Because I had to? Well, partly because I had to, because I wasn't going to get any better. That's how, I, you know, the, the, but, but it wasn't something that, like somebody was telling me I had to. And man, I'm doing scales. I'm doing stuff that doesn't sound like music. I mean, it's just, you know. Why? Because I delight in it. I was exposed to somebody that inspired me to delight in this. <laughs> now, Hayden. Is Hayden? Where did, where did Hayden go? Oh, there he is. He's back there. So we got, we got him a uh, we got him a video game when he was how old was he? Three or four or something? <laughs> he was five. I'm thinking because all I played is, is Donkey Kong, you know? Uh, well, and Pong. Remember Pong? Yeah, yeah, Pong. And, 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 then, and then Donkey Kong, Mark Hankins. I traveled with Mark Hankins, and he had one of those little, he had a TV set up in his motorhome, and, and everybody would be uh, in the house, and I, I'd stay up to 2 o'clock playing, you know. Why? Because it's fun, you know? So we get, we get Hayden a, a video game when he's, when he's five, and I'm thinking, all right. What? I think he was four. Yeah. Anyway, he was young. It's young enough for me to have the misperception that I was going to get to play a whole bunch of video games. <laughs> no. He took that thing over at four. 
And the thing was, I lost my delight for video games. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Because he was so good at it, I would fall asleep before it was my turn. <laughs> right? And so, I mean, but, but here's, here's the point is he's gotten very good at video games and I've completely lost any desire to do them at all. When, when I was growing up, you had to put money in them to learn them, you know. And, and it's like, I wasn't, my mom had this phrase, she called us Bermanstein. That we're, that we're, we don't want to ex, give any extra money to anything. Anyway. <laughs> so I, I would never invest the money to learn it. So it's like, you know, I, I never developed that. There were, there's inhibitors to our delighters. And you, it's really hard to delight in more than one thing. And this is what I've noticed, is that to delight in a video game can greatly inhibit your delight in developing a skill. Partly, you, there's just so much energy you've already put into it. There's so much time. And I'm pretty much convinced that if I would have become a, a very good... Uh, now, 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 now there's, there's a lot of people that break these rules, but if you can hang with me on this a little bit, because I, I believe that if I'd gotten consumed with some other delights in my life, I would never have learned the guitar the way I did. Because you cannot delight in more than one thing at a time. Now, we, we can to some degree, but you know what I'm saying. Okay. So I want to talk about this with, with regard to... To God's part in our life. He says, it's not enough to just get some information about me and start trying to do it. Because, man, I've, I've done this myself. The, the, the thing that I can't stand about a guitar piece is when it sounds like mechanical. Now, I don't know if, if anybody can relate to this too much. But especially with, with classical guitar. You practice to a metronome so that you can take the metronome away and play music. If you try to just play even so, oh man, I'm getting too deep into this. I'm sorry. So, so Bach, Bach is one of the most amazing composers because he wrote uh, mathematically. Did you know that Baroque music has a whole bunch of rules? You can't arrive at two intervals from the same direction. Or, or parallel, you have to go opposite. Yeah, that's I said that right in. Like like octaves, you can't go parallel, or fifths, you can't go parallel. And so he would write these pieces that were amazing. He would improvise. Now, oh man, can I? Just, are you okay with this? Kind of to some degree. <laughs> so, well, be with me, okay? Can you just stay, hang, hang on just a little bit, because. He, 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 would, he would write, so, so they would take just like da, 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 and, and make a whole piece out of that one little phrase going up, inverting it, modulating it, doing all kinds of other things, following all the mathematical rules at the same time, and it sounds like music. It's some of the most amazing music. They say that if you listen to box music, it helps you to think. Isn't that amazing? Because it's, it's in alignment. It's not conflicting. It's, and, and your mind can, it's, it's study music. It is. You can go get a Spotify channel and say, I want some study music. A lot of times it'll come up with Bach. Anyway, so to, to practice Bach, you have to have a metronome. Because, I mean, it's very, very detailed. but I hate to listen to somebody that's only played Bach to a metronome because I don't hear heart. All I hear is a machine. <laughs> okay. I think this is kind of good because God wants the same thing. He wants a string connected to the body and to the head that's not just going to make a mechanical sound, but comes from his heart. 
You know, we were talking about that at men's the other night. It's like, you know, he gave this whole law for a purpose of connecting to his heart, and it all got diverted to the what's and the don'ts. And it just sounded like a, a bunch of mechanical stuff. Never produced the music that God wanted to hear. Right? Because that requires delight. Not just conformity. He doesn't just want us to conform. He wants us to delight. And that takes heart. Okay? So let's look at this. Second Timothy. I'm just going to go through some verses real quick. We'll draw this out. Amen? Are you all good? Yes. That only took 50. No, that's all right. That was only 10 minutes. All right. For men, and so, and I'll preface this again. So this is a challenge that we have because we, we have a lot of other things coming at us that want to engage our heart. <clears throat> and, uh, and this is the day that we live in right now. We don't just have video games. We have all kinds of stuff. And on this device, I can ac access all kinds of things that will give me an instantaneous dopamine hit. Yeah. Right. Facebook is, is that way. Did you know people get on social media and they get their delighting from whether or not somebody's responding or, or liking them or anything else? And every moment given to that is stealing from something else. Okay. Now, it's not that we don't live in the world, but we just don't have to be of the world. Because when your delighting becomes the world, it's got your heart. Okay. And, and you can't have more than one God. <laughs> There's only one. Okay, so let's look at this. 2 Timothy 3, 2. For men will be lovers of themselves. <laughs> our, our own bodies, our own, our own uh, uh, being is something that can guide what we delight in, okay? Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good. Man, he's been thinking about this for a while, hasn't he? Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than than lovers of God. So in each one of those descriptions of something, I believe they're, they're a subcategory of lovers of pleasure. And you could say that they are delighting. Did you know that, that, that all the negative behaviors are coming from a delighting in something? They're being driven by something else. They're lovers of pleasure. And, and when, when pleasure is what drives you, you can be very frustrated when somebody gets in the way of your pleasure. <laughs> right? That's where a lot of strife comes from. But it says, now, and, and this is the key that I want to see here. It says, lovers of pleasure rather. So that means that there's two different sides to this that we can affect how we're being, what we're delighting in. Okay? Rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness... But denying its power, and from such people, turn away. Well, I thought all this Jesus stuff was just supposed to be us just coexisting and just loving it. Well, we can have a heart of compassion for everybody. But we become desperate for a way that only delights in God. Can you see that? How essential that is. What does it say here? It says, they have a form of godliness. To me, that's like somebody that knows how to play Bach to a metronome. Yeah. You know? They're, they're, they're making notes, but I don't hear God. Because you have to be delighting. And this is where I want to challenge us in this. Because we can... If we're not careful, this is a description of us. We might not have all those other nasty things that he was saying. We don't have to identify with all those, but you know what? The little things can rise up. If we're not actually, not just, we, we, we put our own idea of what it means to love God, don't we? We, we put our own perspective on what that is. But l let's look at this. It must be a delighting. It must, it's it's got to be, so, be kind of like the dog 
Spin in circles so that you'll throw the ball for him, you know? There's an anticipation. It's it's like that's what you, you know, there's a lot of people that are very quiet and and they'll act like they're they're, they're very, you know, to themselves until you ask them the right question about what they delight in. Because everybody's delighting in something. Does this happen for us with God? And I want to challenge us with this. <laughs> All right? Otherwise, we can, we can put on our, God, or our church face and show up, you know? <laughs> but is it really what we're living, you know? I went, to, I went to music school because I wanted to be a musician. I was in the 70s. I thought I had cool hair. I, this is what I was going to be. This is, this is what I delighted in. Right? <laughs> From such people turn... No, I oh. <laughs> But what I found and what I'm enjoying actually about music now is that What's wonderful is, is I'm hearing more and more music from my own playing. It's like, oh, I love that. It, it's, it's breathing on a phrase. And, ha- and there's a musical expression of its, it's volume and its, it's, its tone. And it's like, it's, it's wonderful. Every time you play it, it can be a little bit different. Why? Because it's coming from your heart. You know? And, and it's amazing some of these pieces that you you had to focus on and 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 look at all look at your hands and you know now I can sit back and go like this and it's like oh it's just it's it's actually kind of heavenly okay I, I I I know I'm talking about what I do but it, it, it's 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 my it's my delight. All of us have something like that. But here's the thing with God is it's like is is He touching this part of us? Because I believe this is part of what it means to love God. It's to get excited about him. And it will touch these areas of our life. I was thinking about this just with regard to, to holiness. Because so many times there's, there's a challenge to our holiness that we need, we, we feel like we have to attack the problem. You know, the, the area that might be causing us to fall. <laughs> we think I, I got to take care of that. And according to this, it's just a problem of delighting. And let's look, let's look at this. Loving the Father displaces love of the world. So this is a, a very powerful tool that we've been given. Instead of feeling like we have to take authority over something, you know. We, we talked about this with regard to light. That, that, in fact, I, I, I just saw something recently that was talking about this. It says, light is actually eternal. It's actually inside of coal. It's inside of elements. And it exists eternally. But darkness disappears immediately when light shows up. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and the problem with a displaced delight disappears with the delighting in God. So, so much of the time, we're not familiar with what that means. Even when we're talking about this right now, it's like, well, I, you know, I, I've been living this to some degree. But I believe it's, it's, it's almost foreign to us, even, even if we've experienced it to some degree. But this feeling of the Holy Spirit and what we've been talking about today already, this is a delighting in God where he's touching parts of our being that nothing else can touch. Amen? And to do this intentionally, if you do it intentionally, it's like me practicing my guitar for five hours. When I do that intentionally, I can have an expectation of an increased ability to do it. Amen? And with each delighting of God, there will be a removal of a disability that another delighting has. Are you following all this? All right. 1 John 2.15, do not, now, if, if you're told to not do something, that means you, do, you, you don't have to keep doing it. You can, you can cease, right? 
Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So he's, he's saying that to love the world, to delight in the things of the world is to have delight in God displaced, right? And if that's true, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not the Father, uh, not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he, listen to this, but he who does the will of God abides forever. What does it take to do the, to do the will of God? To know about it? To delight in it. Why do you think, why do you think uh, David got so fired up about knowing the will of God? Because he could delight in what he knew about God? And it, it tapped into his heart. That's what made David. What does it say about David? The man after God's own what? Heart. That means he delighted in, in God's heart. He delighted in doing what he knew to do. Can you see that? Now, <laughs> it's, it's almost an intangible thing that we have to touch here today. But I think it's so essential. There has to be an intentional determination to spin circles around what we know God wants us to do. Can you see this? <laughs> so now I'm not doing it because I'm supposed to or I have to. I'm doing it because I am excited about God. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go to Psalm 1, 1 through 2. So, uh, so how does this happen? How, how do we affect our delights? If this is so important, right, that our delight is going right to our heart, how do you, how do you actually affect that? And, um, man, this is, a, I, my, my wife and I, the first recording we did was a long time ago. I think this is one of Hayden's favorite songs, isn't it? I shall not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I shall not sit. Stand in the way, a sinner. I shall not sit in the seat of the scornful. But my delight shall be in the law of the Lord. But my delight shall be in the law of the Lord. So how do you affect your delight? He says, I will not sit. I will not stand. Who's deciding this? You cannot help but be affected in your delight by where you choose to sit, where you choose to stand, what you choose to be, who you choose to be with. That's why, that's why Paul says, don't have anything to do with these people. Why? Because who you choose to hang out with has a great deal to do with where your delight is going to go. Why do you decide not to do these things? Why do you decide? decide because it's a, that's what my denomination says. I, you know, I grew up, I wasn't supposed to dance. I wasn't supposed to go to movies. I wasn't supposed to do all these kinds of things. And I'm thinking it's just a bunch of things, a bunch of law stuff. And maybe it was. But for my dad, it wasn't. He came out of a culture that did not love God. And all those things were associated with that. And so for him, not doing those things was preparing himself to delight in God. Can you see that? Yes. Now, we, we don't all have the, the same things, but this says, if, but my delight will be. I won't do those things. And in, 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 in separating myself from things of the world, if you love the world, the love of the Father isn't in you, right? So how do you affect the love of the Father in you, if you're having an issue with delighting in God, you can have much to do with it by saying, okay, what have I associated with? What have I exposed myself to? Amen? <laughs> you know, this can, we have so many things that, we're, that are available to us. You know, just the news alone. You know, we can be aware of what's going on, but we do not have to get our dopamine hits from what's going on in the world. You know what I mean? 
We need to be spending some time allowing God to hit our dopamine a little bit, right? Uh, and his law, he meditates day and night. The things of God, they should inspire, they should, they should equip, they should enable us. Amen? All right. Choosing our delight transforms our heart and its benefit. So when you do this, this is what we need to understand. We don't have, um, um, <laughs> how was that word again? You don't build up the ability to submit yourself to these things without being affected by it. You know, this is something that, that, that I, 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 th I thought this is amazing. Just going to a, a church service, getting filled with the Holy Ghost, being, because, uh, I, I, you know, rolling on the floor, whatever, does not make you kept from falling into other delights. <laughs> Just because you experience God doesn't mean that you're going to be kept from other things. You have to decide what you're going to do. It has to be a choice you make. Can you see this? And what it's doing when you make that choice, it's a heart choice that you're making. It's not just a religious choice you're making. It's like I said for my dad, that was a heart choice. Now, it wasn't for me. It was more just you don't do this, you know. But it is for me now. It's interesting how that, that transforms over time, right? But let's see this. So, so we can affect what we delight in by what we choose to be around, the environment, the culture that we're around, right? But when we do that, it's not just, it's not just a religious effect. It's a heart effect. Now, partly with my music, partly the reason why I like to hear music that's played is because I've heard somebody play it. Not just to the metronome. I've heard somebody make that expression, and I've actually cried listening to somebody play it from their heart. And you know what that does? It inspires in me that same desire to do the same thing. Right? Okay. Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself. <laughs> that means I'm not waiting for somebody to give me the, you know, the, the, the award, I'm not waiting to win all the money to get happy about something. I believe I've already got it. I believe I've already been made to be the righteousness of God in Christ right now, right? So he says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Huh. So if I make this choice about my culture, I'm going to separate myself from other influences because you cannot help, even, in, you know, the music we listen to, the, the videos we watch, what we're doing is we're giving our heart to it to be entertained by it and to delight in it. Can you see that? And, and we can think that we can get by with that. And I'm so grateful for mercy and for grace and all these things that make it so that we can go back to God right away. But we're not going to be experiencing the love of God, the delighting in God. Unless we choose. And what it's doing to our heart, something's happening to our heart every time we choose to delight in something else. Can you see that? But when we delight in, when you say, delight yourself in the Lord, and what does it do? It transforms your heart. <sighs> and why can God give you the desire of your heart in two different ways? He gives you the thing itself, and he gives you the delight for it he will first of all transform what you delight in so that he can give it to you two things happen right commit your way to the lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass huh so something's happening to my heart first of all i affect what i delight in by my what i'm around don't think that you're not being affected that you're invulnerable to what you're around and it's not just your mind, it's not just your soul, it's your heart. Your heart is being affected, right? <clears throat> Delighting engages the heart over religious traditions. Look at what Jesus had to say about this. Man, I'm going quick. Are you all good? 
All right, I'll, I'll get through this. This is important, isn't it, right? Matthew 15, 8. These people draw near to me with their mouth. Who's he talking about? He's talking about all the religious people. Talk about somebody that knows the word of God. These guys knew all of it, right? But they turned it into a tradition to where the, the, the tradition became Bach with the metronome, right? There's no heart. That's what he's saying. Near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. It all, it's all fitting into what you're supposed to do, but their heart is far from me. Oh, let's be helped with this. Can we do this today? You know what? In the middle of whatever we're going through, there's an opportunity for us to delight in God. In the middle of the storm. In the, that's what trusting him is. Is saying even though this stuff's going on around me. My heart's getting excited. Because I have a relationship with God. Amen. Amen. And in vain they worship me. It's not just the songs. Teaching us doctrines. The commandments of men. What are doctrines? Those are things that are actually from the heart of God. But I say, it's, it, it sounds like what it's supposed to be, but it just does not feel good. Right? Because there's no heart. And Jesus is saying that. So, there's a necessity for us to draw near to the heart of God and to delight in it. To be affected by him. Amen? By his holiness. By his righteousness. Hebrews 10, 19, draw near with a purpose to delight. Okay, let me just get through these real quick because I just, uh, well, maybe we won't have time, but uh, we can do it without music. I was wanting to sing a song together, but uh, we might just, just be aware next time we come, <laughs> remind you, right? But uh, Hebrews 10, 19 talks about this. It says, therefore, brethren, have boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with what? A true heart. What's a true heart? That, that's a heart that's not pretending. It's not a heart that, that really can't wait for this service to get over so that I can go watch Dallas. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Levi. I had to, had to hit your button there. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no there, there, there's other things that we enjoy, you know, fishing and hunting and, and sports and, and everything else, but, but can God not have some kind of, I'm here for him? You know, there's a new movie out that it's like three and a half hours long. And most of the time, people don't get up and go to the bathroom during this thing. You know? I don't know. I don't sit through the, you know. But, but you know what I mean? It's like, and these, these games, I mean, if they go to overtime, baseball, Right? How long are they? They're three or four hours long, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, to me, that's just a great example of baseball. How much, how much of that three and a half hours is actually action? You know, it's just, you know, 10 minutes or something? You know? <laughs> yeah. See, here's a guy that's working on this right now. He's, this, this is all t for him today. <laughs> Where we go in worship is a, is a precious place that's been bought by the blood of Jesus for us to do what? Yawn and wait for it to be over so that the three and a half hour baseball game can... <laughs> All right, just real quick. I went to a baseball game with, with, with Hayden out in California. The, the pastor... Man, he was a um, Atlanta Braves fan, and and they were coming to town to play the what is it, L.A. Angel, what is it, Dodgers. Dodgers, Dodgers. 
So we went to Dodger Stadium and sat in the nosebleed, and nothing happened for nine innings. And it got so exciting because <laughs> nothing was happening. It was a no-hitter. Oh, that's so exciting. Nobody's hitting. <laughs> so we'll yawn through worship. This precious place that's been made for us at the heart of God where we can actually delight in something that's going to be eternal and take us to a heavenly home. We yawn during that and we don't, we're not bold to go anywhere so that we can go home and see nothing happen for three and a half hours and get and delight in that. All right. I know this isn't y'all, but I thought that was amazing. That's somebody, yeah. No, that's not even, we won't even say that. We're another church. That's, a, that's the world, right? That's the world. We're not of the world, are we? We're transformed. We're, we're hearing a new gospel, something that we already have, and we're being renewed in what it really is so that we can actually get excited and spin circles around what God's doing and boldly go to this place at his side where we're affected by his presence. Where, where we rise up on the inside and we're excited about a God who loves us when we're ugly and unlovable. Amen? Amen. Let us draw near then with what? With a true heart. That means it's a heart that's been set aside unto him. I don't wait to get into the presence of God to decide that I'm worshiping him. I come to the presence of God because I have been worshiping him. And I come boldly to his throne. Can you see that? With a heart that's true. Full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. There should be something about God that I long for. Amen? There should be something about God that I'm looking to see. How many look to see your notifications on Facebook? Okay. Good for you. <laughs> she does that. But you know, there, there, there's those things that we, you know, that we're looking for. How many are waiting to hear what God, that's, that's our life that we've been given. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yes. And this actually is our victory over those other things that will destroy us. If there's something in our life that's, that's getting us down in any way, if there's any, if there's any kind of oppression, if there's any kind of discouragement coming our way, how do you care for that? Delight in the Lord. Amen? And I know this, this is like a, it can almost be a mysterious, mysterious thing. It can be like, this is supernatural. Amen? Amen? But this is what we've been born into. And it's either reality to us, or we're just loving the world. <laughs> Amen? Let me read one more here. We can be intentionally impacted by his presence. James 4, 8. Who does the drawing? Did you know that you're an artist? <laughs> you get to draw. <laughs> I know this is really a pretty sorry joke, but we are the ones that draw. We don't get anything from God that we don't go to get. He doesn't impose his presence on us, does he? If we're going to delight in him, it's going to come from us first. Amen? If we're waiting around for some move of God so that we can get on board and all of a sudden get excited about God, is that a true heart? No, that's a heart that actually is in the world, being gratified by the world, that needs to be shown something bigger somehow so that they can be impressed by a God who's been bigger than all the rest all along. And they've just not chosen to go there. Why are these moves taking place? Because people choose to go there. We can do it all the time. Amen? Every time we come together, we should be anticipating a flood of the Holy Spirit. Amen? We should be excited about that. We should be spinning circles. Right. Throw it to me. Throw it to me. 
right? Draw near to God, and what will he do? He'll draw near to you. What's this next part of all about? Well, it has to do with your delighter. What is the cleansing? You know, sometimes I, I, I've seen this and I think, oh man, I got to go get clean before I can get, go to God. No, you're, you're, you're getting clean by going to God. Can you see that? It doesn't say cleanse your hands before you go to God. It says no, draw near to God. And he'll draw near to you. And in the process of that, you'll be delighting in him. And those things that are unclean, those things that are unacceptable in his presence, they're cared for by his grace. And you're cleansed from those unrighteous things. And their power to determine where you're going to give your efforts and your, and your energy and your ability. Because that's what delight does. It consumes your energy. It consumes your time. It consumes your passion. Right? He says, when you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. And you'll find that those things that are destroying you will be cleansed. And you'll be made to be clean. What is the most precious thing that happens to us when we get saved? And we, we get saved by going to him, don't we? What's the most precious thing that happens? We're made clean, aren't we? What did we do to get there? We just went. We didn't get clean before we went. We got clean by him when we went. That's what we continue to do. Man, we, you would think you tasted of that. Oh, man, I'm going to go back there again. You know what I mean? That's, that should be something where, man, I don't drive by McDonald's anymore. I have to stop and get it. No, I do, but you know what I'm saying. Once you've tasted and seen, you're going to want to get some more. Amen? Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. We cannot love God and the world at the same time. That sounds like a double-minded person, doesn't it? How do you fix that? Don't feel bad about it. Don't, don't get condemned about it. Don't say, well, if I just feel bad enough, maybe I'll quit liking the world. No, you're going to like the world as long as you keep associating with it. But you get around God and you'll lose your passion and your delight for the things that destroy you. Amen? Can we just, can we just delight in him just a little bit here before we go? Let's just be ministered to by the Holy Spirit, can we? Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord.